Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the French Cruisers. This is the Tier 3 Freon class of cruisers. Uh, the Freon class of cruisers are, well, they're paper ships, and there's no information available on any English sources, so really all we have to go on is Wargaming's word, which as I'm sure you all can read, basically says it was a light cruiser project designed after the end of World War I and apparently revealed the acute shortage of this type of ship in the French Navy. The primary features were high-speed, weak armor, powerful torpedo armament, and main guns placed in turrets. And at Tier 3, this ship is actually a little bit of an oddball because if you go and look at other tier three cruisers like St. Louis or Bogatier, you get cruisers that were designed in the early half of the 1900s or the late part of the 1890s. And it's odd that this ship is placed here because it is oddly modern. You'll notice that the gun layout, you have uh, ABXY or uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. You've got super firing turrets, which would have been unusual for, uh, you know, the time frame at which other Tier 3 cruisers were made. And it, the whole thing just is just odd. Well, you know... For all of that, uh, you know, Wargaming's description is oddly accurate. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive right into uh, how the ship plays in game because there is no history for them because none of them were ever designed or none of them were ever built. And um, in terms of in-game play style, I mean, it's pretty simple. The ship is your typical HE spamming fire breather. I mean, it starts fires very well. It's got 139 millimeter guns, which means that if you're really interested in specking and having a permanent captain on board Freon, you could actually uh, use AFT and uh, BFT, so advanced and basic firing training, to enhance the range and decrease, or, sorry, increase your rate of fire, you know, decrease the time it takes to reload shells. And that kind of makes the ship unique because it's right at that limit. Uh, you know, the limit is exactly 139 millimeters, so there we are with Freon. And uh, you could do that. We, we have not done that in this video because this captain will be carrying on into other ships. And so we're not going to spec this captain into advanced firing training or basic firing training for the purposes of buffing its rate of fire or range. That said, it does actually have decent range straight out of the box at 12.9 kilometers. Uh, basically, though, this ship is going to rely on some... Uh, well, it's going to rely heavily on its HE. The AP is not particularly strong unless a ship is exactly broadside. If there's any angle, it just lacks any penetration, and it's really not all that useful. It's especially not useful at longer ranges, and... To some people, that's going to be a little frustrating, especially if you're playing, like, say, the U.S. Cruiser Line in comparison, which has very good AP out to, you know, the max range. So uh, that actually is a trend that will continue on through the French Cruiser Line until we get into the heavy cruisers starting at Tier 7. One other thing I don't particularly care about this ship is the way it is armored. Um, it has none. So you can see here in the, the armor p part of the stats, up to 30 millimeters of armor. Guess where that's at? Your conning tower. Armor belt, 13 millimeters. Six millimeters basically everywhere else except for this amidship section. And if we take this off, you can see we get a 10 millimeter citadel bulkhead behind it. So this armor is actually spaced, um, but uh, there's just no protection there. So we... And the other thing is, is, it's above water, so we run into two problems with this armor configuration. Number one, if you angle this ship at all, you're going to eat massive Citadel hits or massive amounts of normal penetrating hits because you simply cannot bounce anything with six millimeters of armor. And if you go broadside with that above water Citadel... If they shoot from far enough away so that they don't just pen straight through, you're going to eat Citadel hits like crazy. So it doesn't matter if you're broadside to enemy ships or if you are 
angled to them, you're just going to take damage all the time. And that is extremely frustrating. It's one of the hardest parts about playing the low tier French cruisers is there's just no angle at which you can mitigate damage from enemy incoming fire and really any in incoming fire because quite honestly this ship's above water profile is massive i think this ship would give phoenix and omaha a run for their money in terms of the amount of ship above water it it's it's crazy the nice part about this ship though is it is fast it is maneuverable and it does have they're usable torpedoes but i mean the, they're very situational i it's hard to really describe a situation which I'm thoroughly, uh, you know, using them and relying upon them for damage output. So, as you can imagine, because a ship has next to no armor, it is going to play an awful lot like the U.S. cruisers do, where putting an island between you and the ships that could shoot at you is probably the best course of action, and being caught out in the open is playing with the devil, for, for lack of a better phrase. Basically... If you take any incoming fire, it's going to hurt. And that can be extremely hard to get used to. All right, so let's talk about some stats. She has 20,300 hit points, up to 30 millimeters of armor. Again, that's in the conning tower. A torpedo damage reduction of 4%, so basically nothing. You might as well ignore it. The main battery does consist of four dual 139 millimeter guns. Again, they are mounted in an AB. XY configuration, uh, basically two super firing pairs, meaning one can fire over the other. And they have a range of 12.9 kilometers, a 12 second reload time, which by the way is ridiculous for what amounts to a five and a half inch gun. Um, yikes. The It does have a secondary armor, but I'm really not going to interested in talking about that. Uh, in terms of the primary, though, 2,000 damage on HE shell impacts, 10% fire chance. That's really the, the strength of it. Uh, the AP, 2,700 damage. It's all right. But the HE actually has a higher shell velocity and thus gets to your target quicker. And that's a huge advantage and the reason why this ship's AP is kind of lackluster. That said, at Tier 3, you will see uh, occasionally Tier 4 cruisers, uh, Kuma... And Phoenix, both of those are very easy to Citadel at closer ranges. So that AP is still useful. You just got to be in the right situation to use it. Secondary, we got four 90 millimeter guns, uh, three kilometer range. Really not going to be specking into secondaries on this ship. In terms of torpedoes, we have four triple launchers. And they are mounted both amidships, so they are mounted in the middle of the ship here, right next to each other. They have fantastic firing arcs. It's one of the few strong suits of the ship. But they only have a 6 kilometer range, 57 knot speed, 12,233 damage, and a 1.2 kilometer detection range. Basically, this ship is kind of like the Royal Navy cruisers in that it's a little bit of a contradiction. The armor says stay away from everything. But the torpedoes say, I'm a fantastic brawling ship. And this ship is a situationally strong brawler, so that's not to be ignored. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, it has none. I'm just going to say that. Uh, there, there are some guns, apparently, on here. We got two 13.2mm uh, guns. I'm going to go ahead and say that they do next to no damage. Yep, five. 1.2 kilometer range on those. And then those 90 millimeter secondaries also come in as part of the anti-aircraft suite. But as you can see, uh, 11 damage per second. And at tier 3, you will see tier 4 carriers and you have zero recourse against them. <laughs> 30 knot top speed, turning circle radius of 560 meters, and a rudder shift time of 6 seconds. This is basically high tier destroyer levels of maneuverability with the exception of the rudder shift but the thankfully the rudder actually has good what i'm going to call rudder effort or or rudder impact basically at part rudder the ship will change directions very easily so it doesn't take much to get the ship to change directions and that's great detection range by sea of 11 kilometers detection range uh, by air by uh, 5.6 kilometers and if you're going to fire and smoke 5k so not too shabby 
In terms of upgrades, I'm going to recommend Main Armaments Mod 1 or Magazine Mod 1. Those are going to be the two that I'm going to recommend. Magazine Mod 1 is going to be a 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes being incapacitated, plus 50% to their hit point pool, and minus 20% to the time it takes to repair them. Magazine Mod 1 is useful if you're out of debt flags. The ship doesn't have any armor, and thus, uh, you know, I'm sure it has a higher base a detonation chance. If not, I would be willing to bet that this ship sees a lot of detonations. I can't speak from personal experiences. It hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, but there's ba that's basically a free uh, detonation flag. In the second slot, I'm running Propulsion Systems Mod 1, and this is for a 20% chance sorry, 20% reduction in the chance of your engine becoming incapacitated and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair this. You could also run steering gears mod one, which is the same thing except for your steering gears. And either one of these just kind of depends on which one you feel is a bigger detriment to lose. Personally, I'd much rather be able to continue to move forward rather than being stationary because at least that option allows the ship to change its aspect towards the enemy. So if your rudder gets stuck jammed over, or even if you're stuck in a straight line, you can at least change your speed and throw off incoming fire that way. Damage control systems mod one, really not useful on cruisers because, well, if you're on fire, that means you're taking damage and this ship has absolutely zero tanking ability when it comes to uh, mitigating damage from incoming fire. So let's go look at this in a battle video and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the way it plays. All right, so these, the, the, the tier three cruisers are actually going to experience a lot of tier four fights. And so that's what I brought here for you for us to look at here. And uh, I, I can't help but wonder if this ship would just be better off if it had protected uh, matchmaking, but uh, that's a different discussion for a different time. As you can see, there are carriers in this match. However, destroyer-wise, there are none on the enemy team and only one on mine, which is curious because... Usually at the low tiers, we end up with at least two destroyers per team. So this is kind of an interesting match. I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, the map is New Dawn, which is one of my favorite maps in the game. And an absolute riot of a map to play with higher tier ships. Like if you go into a training room and you're, you guys are practicing for Clan Wars or something. If you really want to push the capabilities of, of your team... Push yourselves into a tier 8 or tier 9 fight on this map. You would be surprised at how much fun it is because of how close in the range is. Anyway, so let's talk about Friant and the, the ways in which we play this. Now, obviously, uh, there are a couple of things that you got to keep in mind. You're not the most stealthy ship at this tier. In fact, if you play the Rush the Cap game, you will be very, very disappointed in how quickly you get removed from the game. And we're gonna see a little bit of that, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be showing this video. But the the key to capping with this, and especially since our one destroyer is nowhere near us, the key to, to capping with this ship is to be extremely patient and make sure that your support is there to help out. It's very easy with 30 knots plus if you're running the speed flag to get so far ahead of your your team that you have no support going into the cap. And you're just going to have to play it by ear. Either you're going to end up uh, with with support going in or you're going to, you know, maybe, maybe you don't need the support to go in initially, but you definitely want your support to arrive by the time that the enemy fleet gets there. Because like I said, this ship has zero capabilities when it comes to tanking rounds. If you are the focus of enemy fire, basically you need to be prepared to be removed very early on. And the one thing that is nice about this ship's maneuverability and speed, though, is that you can go rushing from uh, from island to island, from hardcover to hardcover, especially on these maps like this where you've got a decent amount of hardcover, or if you end up playing on, like, Big Race, that's another map that you'll see a lot in Tier 3 with a lot of islands in it. And that that's kind of nice because you can sit there and you can use the islands for cover. Now, us here, we've we've chosen to go the southern route towards C. It looks like they've got some ships that are headed up towards A. 
I'm guessing that means that they're going to have an a primary a B focus. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into C and well, this may or may not be a good idea. It's always a risk to jump in and the, you know, the support it's there, but it's not, it's not a hundred percent. And Already looking at some things that are kind of like, oh boy. Minimap, you have a Miyogi that shows up. we got a St. Louis that shows up. I'm really not worried about the St. Louis too much. Uh, I do know that, you know, so long as I'm at range and so long as he is nose in towards me, he's not a huge threat. However, this Miyogi is a massive threat. And now we have another St. Louis involved in this fight. We're going to throw some torpedoes down at this St. Louis because let's face it. He's kind of uh, stationary. Ooh, whew, survived that one. He, he's, there's another fire. So like three salvos into the match and we have two fires going. Uh, basically though, this St. Louis, you know, I'm not too concerned about him, but what I do want to do is I want to get out of this cap as fast as possible. And we want to lay as many torpedoes as possible into the path of the St. Louis until support can really take over. Now, our friendly Phoenix over here, I do not know what he is doing. I guess he's going after, well, he was going after that St. Louis there, but now he's going to go after this St. Louis, which we've just hit with a torpedo and done some damage to. Whoop, do some dancing there with our wicks. Now we're going to go back and try and help our Phoenix stay alive because let's face it, we need him to. Look at those torpedoes. Ooh, if this St. Louis lives, that's going to be pretty. Uh. Oh, of course. Well, one of our St. Louis decided to go ahead and take him out. Well, with this, uh, you know, we got ourselves a Kawachi. We got plenty of opportunity to use this island for hard cover. Yeah, we're spotted by aircraft. I'm really not terribly worried about it. But, well, we're going we're gonna to end up coming out on this anyway. We might as well make a big move out of it. Especially since he is extremely focused on this Phoenix, which I don't blame him. This Phoenix is actually a bigger threat at this point than I am. The Phoenix uh, is close enough to use his torpedoes and is starting him on fire like crazy. Doing a little bit of tanking there. And it, like I said earlier on, you know, at these closer ranges, you, you almost can get away with, but there it is. So there was your Citadel from point blank range. Like that was literally 5K away, 6K, and I got Citadel. And that's one of the hard parts about this. Now, of course, everybody's going, well, but you're in a cruiser, so you shouldn't be sailing broadside to anything in a cruiser. Yes, this is true. However, as I already mentioned before, you can't successfully angle in this cruiser. It's just not possible to mitigate damage by angling because of the, how thin the armor is everywhere. Thankfully, though, our HE guns are not slacking in the damage department. We just smacked this Kohlberg there for a couple grand, which is pretty impressive, but more impressive. Look at this Miyogi. Hey, buddy. Look at those torpedoes there. Well, we're not really paying attention to him because we got this Kohlberg, but I can guarantee you we're going to get some hits. There's three torpedo hits. That's not too shabby in terms of damage. We got two floods. He's on fire. Now we just need to kind of contribute more to his death and see if we can't start him on fire in another place and speed up things. Our AA is going crazy, and I get started on fire by the dive bombers. Thankfully, not a whole lot of damage done there. Still getting some floods. Yep, still flooding this Miyogi out. Hoping to get the... Oh, there's a thousand. Ah, the St. Louis got him. So this St. Louis has taken three kills from us, which is fine. I'm not really complaining about getting guns out of this fight, especially down here at this cap, but it is kind of annoying. <laughs> like, I have done so much damage already in such a short amount of time. You know, in six minutes, we did 76,000 damage, basically, and no kills to show for it. Well, maybe we'll get to sneak this Kohlberg then. Nope. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now we got some decisions to make. We got ourselves a uh, Orion over there, which we are definitely in range of. Although I think he's AFK. It looks like he's AFK anyway. No guarantees there. And uh, well, we've got a couple options that we could take here. Now I'm going to take the. We basically have all the caps and we're winning on the ship's battle. So if I go off and try and find this carrier, it's not a huge deal. 
More importantly, though, our carrier has, if you've been paying attention to the chat, basically grounded all of his aircraft, and his strike aircraft, until such time as their carrier is basically out of fighters. And that means that until somebody ponies up to go after this carrier, we're basically going to have zero air support. Not exactly my preferred method, but, uh, well... We don't get much choice. It looks like this Orion is actually in this fight. He's just sailing backwards. And we are out in the open, but we are not detected. And we're not detected because we are... We have an 11-kilometer detection range. We have a lot longer gun range than that. And the Orion is very, very, very interested in what's going on at B, where we have a Bellerophon. Bellerophon? However the heck you say that word. And a Wyoming... Uh, that are thoroughly taking their attention. We are going to go ahead and shoot at this Caledon, though, and then we're going to switch over to the Orion. And uh, the big reason for that, uh, I think at this range, it's safe enough that if we use WAS and D, we should be able to mitigate the majority of the damage that we're going to take. And now his guns are pointed at me, so we need to wait for the muzzle flash. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. Okay, so there's the muzzle flash. He's definitely shooting at us. Slam on the brakes and turn in. Does it work? Oh! <laughs> Light damage. All right. Well, we've got a about a thirty second reprieve here from his uh, from his onslaught. The Bellerophon is gone. No, the Caledon is gone. The Bellerophon just took out the Caledon. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to keep shooting at this Orion in the hopes that we can actually land us some hits. He has shifted his attention to a more prescient threat, which is fantastic for those of us who have only 3,000 hit points left. <laughs> oh, look, carriers. Oh, joy. Well... As you all know from the first part of this video, we don't have any anti-aircraft, so that means that we are basically playing the dodge the torpedo game as best we can because we can't mitigate it any other way. And you can see he's definitely coming in. Hey, we got two fires on the Orion. That's unfortunate for him. And we're just going to keep turning in and, and hoping that our AA guns do some work. They're not. See, <laughs> I, he, uh, whew. Well, there's some torpedo beats for you. Now I'm even more interested in getting a, a hold of this carrier and just throttling him. Speaking of being throttled, we have a massive risk from dive bombers now. Oh, joy. Just what I always wanted. Well, the key to dive bombers is maintaining a broadside to them because uh, torpedo bombers want a broadside. Dive bombers are best when they come in at an angle. If you slam on the brakes and turn in at the last minute there, you'll actually find that you, uh, well, we finally got a kill. You'll find that they have a tendency to miss. But more importantly, this carrier captain has made a mistake, and that is letting his aircraft run free back to where he's at, which means we know exactly where he is going to be taking off and, and uh, landing aircraft from. This, And it, it looks to me like he's basically cut off. Up oh, there he gets spotted. Well, he isn't a Langley, so let's uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't put him out of his misery here with some good fire. Now, normally this would be kind of risky because we're still sailing out in the open, but you'll notice that all of their ships are going to be behind an island to me. There's a fire on the Langley, and so we are actually immune to enemy incoming fire. Unless that Wyoming suddenly pops up down here, which I don't think he will. There's our Confederate. We're over 100k in a Tier 3. <laughs> which is nothing short of impressive. Maybe we can get a high caliber out of this sometime. That would be fantastic. We've still got this Langley going on fire. We're, we're, we're going hard and fast to this, to this island. Now, I don't know if this Langley captain has his repair party up, but there's another fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. Up to 110,000 damage, and this uh, Langley is still going. Oh, there he pops up again. Well, let's just continue to add to the burning mess that he already is. Got to be careful with the Nassau there. There's our high caliber. Got to be careful with the Nassau. We definitely uh, have some risk there of getting taken out by him. Oh, 
two two grand. See, we're not doing too bad of damage when we get normal pens. The normal pens add up and do decent damage. And I think the Wix is actually going to get this kill because, uh, well, he kind of deserves it. Oh, we took out his engine. Wix went all the way over there to get this kill. And this Langley is just kind of sitting dead in the water. And we got a long shelf light time to get there. Yep, he goes down to the Wix. Now we have to play... Basically, we're going to end up playing very cautiously here. We're going to do what damage we can do, but we're not going to go out of our way to get detected like we, you know, I don't want to say did in the beginning part, but we are up to 122,731. We have an obvious point and ship lead. Very, very fortunate with the torpedo hits, and you're going to see that in the, the very end of this battle at the ending credits on this. Basically, that made this game possible to be this high and you can see how effective it is but we're going to try and engage this Nassau as best we can while retaining our cover you can see that the Wyoming over there just ducked into uh into the the cover there so I am no longer spotted I'm not spotted I guess I never was spotted uh still engaging this Nassau you know he's got three grand and hit points oh we started him on fire might actually get the kill on this nope he gets torpedoed all right, well, 124,647 damage in a Tier 3 is not too shabby. Overall, I, I really don't mind the way that this ship plays. I know a lot of people, I, I know to a lot of people, it sounds like I'm really harping on some of the weaknesses of the ship, mostly in the range, mostly in the rate of fire, mostly in the complete lack of ability to tank any rounds. This St. Louis here is in a much better position if he takes rounds than I am. Because his citadel is protected by the fact that he's a protected cruiser. His citadel is underwater. Even though he doesn't have much in the way of a belt armor or deck armor on top of that citadel, that is a far better configuration than this spaced armor nonsense that the Friant has. And, well, okay, so we got our YM. Ah, before we can engage him, 1,000 points. So the end of the battle, we end a Tier 3 fight with 124,647 damage. Only one kill, 10 fires, 1,338 base XP, half a million in potential damage, lots of, you know, in terms of the, the actual torpedo damage, you know, didn't do too bad there. Overall, the ship's not bad. I'm, I'm, it, I don't have much to really complain about with it. It's a short grind. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.